Today, I'll be showing you how I installed the Tesla wall connector charger in my garage. I've included links to all the tools and materials I used along with a link to a blog post with detailed pictures and step-by-step -step instructions of what I did in the description. I live in the US in a residential area in a house that was built around, I think, 2014. So depending on where you live and how old your house is, your install situation may be slightly different than what I'm about to show you. There's a few things to check before heading out to the home improvement store or even purchasing the home charger. I encourage you to watch the entire video from start to end before doing anything. And then of course like the video so you can reference it later. My personal saying is that no DIY project is complete without at least three trips to the home improvement store. So plan ahead so those three trips don't turn into six trips. Here's what you'll need to do. First, check and make sure you have at least 200 amp service to your home. Then figure out how to get access to your circuit breaker box to run additional wire. Third, figure out what kind of circuit breaker box you have so you know what breaker switch to buy. Then, if you plan on running a line straight from your main circuit breaker box, local code may require you to install a disconnect switch. What this means is there has to be a mechanism for disconnecting power to the charger that is separate from the main box. Your air conditioning unit likely has one of these. For me, I already have a sub-panel set up that has a circuit breaker switch in it. Do your own research and find out if your municipality or local code requires it. You don't need to install a full sub-panel like I have here. You can run a box with a disconnect switch that costs less than $20 from Home Depot to do this. And from what I found Googling around uh, online, it deals with code 86-304 uh, disconnecting means, specifically with circuits that are 60 amps or greater. Now, I'm not an electrician, so do your own research, and if you're not 100% sure, call an electrician. Lastly, consider future-proofing this install, especially if you already have plans on purchasing a second electric vehicle. Lastly, I have included links to all the tools and materials I use in this video. I highly recommend setting in-store pickup. It'll save some time, and you'll avoid mixing up any parts like I did on my first trip to Home Depot. Where do I put the Tesla wall charger or connector? I'm gonna use charger connector interchangeably here uh, just for clarification. I'm going to be placing this piece of oak hardwood with a walnut inlay behind mine as a sort of decorative piece and to make it easier to mount. However, it still needs to be connected to a stud in the wall. The maximum height it can be mounted is 60 inches from the floor with a minimum height of 18 inches indoors and a minimum height of 24 inches outdoors as stated by Tesla. I'll be placing my charger right next to my sub panel and next to this shelf. Keep in mind this charger will need to connect to Wi-Fi, so you may want to double check on your phone that you have a Wi-Fi signal that reaches where you're installing the charger. If not, consider purchasing a Wi-Fi network extender or relocating the charger. Running conduit to the charger. Now decide how you're going to run conduit from your box to the charger. Tesla provides instructions for running conduit to the bottom, top, or rear of the charger. If you're running it through the rear, you'll need to drill out holes to accommodate the wiring. Otherwise, the top and bottom holes on the charger have a gasket that pops off and fits three quarter inch conduit by default. I'm going to run conduit to the top of the charger from the side of my sub panel. Map out your path from the box to charger and start making any bends you need to the conduit. If you need to bend metal conduit, you'll need a conduit bender. Who would have thought? There are plenty of other videos out there on how to bend metal conduit or you can use PVC. If you're placing the charger outdoors, you will want to check what you need to use to stay up to code. To give myself a little bit of wiggle room, I'm leaving some extra length on each side of the conduit so I can trim it down and dial it in if needed. Make sure you have deburred both ends of the conduit with a deburring tool. Before attaching the conduit to the box, I'm going to remove the back of the wall charger and center it on the oak and walnut. From the looks of the included instructions, you can use the holes along the top and bottom of the charger, so as long as they match up. It looks like it's made this way to give you flexibility in how you mount it to the stud. However, since I'm attaching it to this piece of wood, I'm going to use four holes total for a secure fit. First, I'll line everything up, pre-drill the holes, and attach the back. 
Then I'll line the piece of wood up on the wall over where I estimate where the stud is, make sure it's level, and mark the four corners on the wall. Using a stud finder, I'll mark the edges and or center of where the stud is showing. Then I'll check the surrounding area with the stud finder to make sure there are no live AC wires there. I use this nail technique to find the true center of the stud. Stud finders can be inaccurate and framing lumber never truly runs straight, so this assures me I'm putting a screw dead center. Start by hammering a nail into the drywall gently until you creep up on the stud. Once you find one edge, keep going across until you find where the nail pushes through easily. Find the middle distance between those two holes and you have the center of the stud. Now I can make a mark in between the middle of the corner wood markings. I'll line the piece of wood up again, make a small mark where the stud line on the wall is showing, and draw a straight line down to the bottom mark. This will be accurate enough for me. Now I can accurately drill two to three holes in the wood and then attach it to the wall. Finally, I'll reattach the back of the wall charger and move on with the rest of the setup. If you don't mount the wall charger on a piece of wood, it's as simple as finding the center of the stud, using the template to mark the holes on the wall, and attaching the back. Opening the breaker box. At this point, you should have the conduit bent and ready to screw into place and the back plate of the charger connected to the wall. Take your voltage detector and place it near any outlet or device that you know has power and is working. This is to ensure that the voltage detector is functional and working. If it's not, go get one that is. Now we'll turn off the power to the box and take the faceplate off. Start by turning off all the power to your circuit breaker panel. For me, I'm only turning off the power that goes to my sub panel. If you turn off the circuit breaker panel in the main one I'm showing here, this cuts off all electricity to the entire house. Be sure to do this in the daylight or have a flashlight on and ready. If you do not have a sub panel, you will need to turn off the electricity to the main panel through the main breaker. Now, using a screwdriver, remove the face of the circuit breaker box. Inside, you'll be able to see the two bus bars that run along the middle and all the circuit breakers that are connected to them. Do not touch these. The wires leading out of the circuit breakers are what lead to the outlets, lights, and everything else in your home that uses electricity. Next, I'll double check the circuit is completely off with my voltage detector. Just because the switch says it's off doesn't mean it's off. The switch could be faulty. Now that everything is off and we've double checked it, I'm going to punch out one of the holes on the side of the box and attach the conduit. Then I'll attach the conduit to the wall connector and make any trim adjustments to the conduit as needed. Should have waited to screw this in and attach this first and then attach this to the wall. So I'm gonna disconnect this from the wood and then re-screw it back in. Running the wire. Once the conduit is firmly in place, I'll take my six gauge wire in red and green and trim off about half an inch of insulation. Some people may use black and green, but I choose to use these two since it's consistent with my current wiring. In my wiring, green is my ground, red is hot, and white is neutral. Red and black are most commonly your hot wires with white as your neutral, and green or a bare uninsulated copper wire as your ground. If you don't know which is which in your setup, do not guess, call an electrician. You can work with solid or stranded, just make sure it's six gauge or thicker for a 60 amp install. You'll need three separate wires, two red and one green. Be sure to make them long enough so that you have plenty of excess to work with on both ends. Strip about half an inch of insulation away on each end of the wire. Loosen up the terminals on your 60 amp breaker switch and insert the two red wires into the terminals. Tighten them down until they're secure. Run all three wires through the conduit and connect the ground wire to the ground bus bar.
attaching the 60 amp breaker. Now take the two pole 60 amp breaker with your two hot wires and attach it to the bus bars. It's called a two pole because the breaker attaches to these two bus bars in the breaker box. Remember that this wall charger requires 240 volts. Each of those poles provides 120 volts, so when you combine two of them together, it provides the full 240 volts and completes the circuit. Unlike other wiring you might see in your breaker box, this does not require a neutral wire, the white wire in my setup. For a single pole, like you see for the majority of outlets you have in your home, the neutral wire completes the circuit. If you want to learn more on this, I'll link a video up in the top right hand corner that fully explains how this works in the US and I think Canada too. Even though I know everything is off, I still try to avoid touching any of the non-ground bus bars to be extra safe. As I mentioned earlier, you'll need to purchase a breaker switch that is compatible with your box. Mine in this case is square D. The easiest way to do this is to match up the configuration with one online and then pick it up in the store. I actually purchased the wrong square D breaker switch while at Home Depot by accident. Wiring the wall connector. Ensure the breaker switch is firmly in place and then move on to the wall connector plate. I'm feeding the wires into the terminals according to the diagram in the instructions and then securing them into the appropriate terminals. It does not matter which red goes into which L1 or L2 slot. Double check to make sure no excess wire is hanging out past the terminal and could possibly touch. Attach the zip tie into this little hook here and secure the wires. Go back and double check that all the connections you have made in your main breaker, your sub panel, and or the disconnect switch are secure. Ensure that absolutely nothing is loose, nothing has been knocked out of place, and there's not any scrap wire, tools, or anything else left in the boxes. After verifying everything is secure and in its place, attach the rest of the wall connector back onto the plate. Add the four screws as directed in the instructions. Knock out two slots on the panel cover for your circuit box and screw it back into place. Turn on the main breaker, then turn on each breaker switch downstream that leads to the wall charger. If everything has gone correctly, you should see the wall connector start lighting up. And that's it. That's how I installed my Tesla wall connector. I would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button on this video, and if you haven't ordered or reserved your Tesla yet, consider using my link below. Like I said earlier, liking the video also allows you to be able to reference it quickly later. Links to all the tools and materials I used are in the description below, and an even more detailed guide with images is included in the blog post. If you're interested in getting a custom wood wall plate like I used for my charger, leave me a comment or send me an email at the address below. If there's enough interest, I'll set up a link and place it at the top of the comments for anyone to purchase. Lastly, thank you for making it to the end of the video. As much as I would like to say this install was as easy as I made it seem, that is 100% never the case with any sort of DIY project. And shooting video can make for some very funny bloopers. So here's a blooper reel of uh, all the different outtakes I had doing this project. Enjoy. Here's where this might have been a bad idea. Because this wood is so hard, it's difficult to get this thick screw through it. So, using my impact driver, I just stripped it out. So now I can't drive it any further in or even take it out. That's why we go back and check. I originally planned in the script, you should go back and check anyway, but oh, I left it a little loose. Okay. 
it's the ground wire, so it's not a huge deal, but if that was a red wire, that'd be a problem. Could be a problem. Everything looks good. That got stuck in there. Didn't even notice that, so yeah, there's another thing. Now I'll do a quick test fit to see if it's roughly where I need it to be. Looks good. I hope. I'm recording this beforehand.